you to do. I hope you're doing fine, cause it's Q and A time again. Hello, we're on. How's it going? Hope you guys are all doing great. If not, as always, I hope it gets better for you. So, welcome to another Friday Night Live Q and A, where you can ask the community and I questions on keeping freshwater aquarium fish and shrimp. Just pretty much anything that does with freshwater aquariums. And I've been doing this a long time. So uh, I've got a little experience. And if I don't know how to do it, there's uh, plenty of people in the chat to help us out. So hello, 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 everybody. Glad to see you all in here. Let me go ahead and get into live chat. <sighs> Time to relax and hang out with y'all. Glad to be here with you guys, as always. Enjoy hanging out with you guys on my Friday nights. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Hello, everybody in the chat saying hi. Wish I could shout y'all. That would just take quite some time. But as far as this week... Um, been getting a lot of small things done, which has been absolutely awesome. Just knocking out like, they're kind of like big little things just help with life so much. And it's nice to have time to finally focus on that. And as you guys have seen, been knocking out a bunch of videos, but holy moly, here we go off the bat, a $5 super chat. Leo 209 Aquatics, thank you so much for that super chat. Definitely much, much appreciated right now. Every bit is counting right now. It says, how to keep a Caradena tank cooler. The tank without a heater stays around 76 throughout the day. 76 isn't bad. That's a pretty decent tip for them. But if you wanted to keep them cool throughout the day, you could freeze a plastic water bottle. And maybe have a couple of them. That way you could rotate them. Maybe have like three or four. That way one's ready. And then you only have to make it a process to fill them up. Like once a week. Say if you got room. I don't know how much room you got in your freezer. That all depends. But if you could do seven or just eight for that week. You'd already have them for that week. Then you'd only have to process them once that week. And uh, yeah, just freeze some water bottles in there. Float them. And they'll just, they'll give them that coolness. But even at 76, I don't know if I would stress it too much. If you're really trying to get your caradina to breed, that bee pollen, any kind of food with bee pollen really helps. Also helps to have uh, soft driftwoods in there, like the bogwood or the Malaysian driftwood. That way they can eat off of it, plus it helps keep things acidic. And off of, also offers hiding spaces uh, for the babies and the adults. So not only do they get something to eat and a hiding space, but they can actually eat their hiding space while they're hiding in it. So that's a cool thing about driftwood and a caradina tank. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. I'm actually gonna do the same for our caradina tank over here. Let me flip you guys around. But Leo, thank you, thank you so much for that super chat. But as I was saying with the videos, did knock out a ton of those this week. So see how you go through there? The shrimp could go in there and then they can hide, but then they can also nibble on it. It's like rock piles just with wood. So with the rock piles, with the neos, I could do the hard lime and uh, hard rock. And then with the caradinas, I'm gonna try to go with that soft uh, wood. And that way they'll pretty much have somewhere to settle and create nurseries in. So we'll be doing tests of all that here in the future. So subscribe if you wanna see what happens with all that. There's still all kinds of things to mess and play with here in this hobby. Even though I've been doing it for so long, there's still always so much to do with it. One day, maybe I'll get to do some salt water. Leo209 Aquatic says, what's the best temp for them? Really, uh, I would say between 72, 76. Some do, people have 
and do keep them like near 68. I think it's kind of a little too chill, but they can handle, I wouldn't really keep them much over 78 for much, for a very long period. But as long as they're underneath that, then that's pretty much optimum. Uh, Stillwater says fan on tank will cool it too. Yeah, that could cool it a little bit, but then you're also going to create a lot of humidity for that room that you're keeping it in. And all right, get back to the videos just to catch up with you guys here because I know some of you guys have been watching them. We've got the quarantine videos that have been kind of going, trying to get through that area. I've got two more videos linked to that. And then we'll get to the build videos. A lot of it is hard to debate on uh, which ones to come out with you guys and for you guys. I think I'll just jump into the rack builds because I doubt you guys want to see the build of the storage and like from the garage from scratch and how I build all that. I think if I do end up making videos on how I build built all this because I did take footage of it all. I was thinking about maybe putting it on Lady LRB's channel, Plant Lady Sarah. So if you type in uh, Lady LRB, Plant Lady Sarah, it, her channel will pop up. She actually just released another video as well yesterday, kind of doing an update on some plants and a few other things, if you guys are interested in that. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the chat here. That way you can help better my mind better make up my mind especially since i make these videos for you guys i mean i live it so i get to see it myself but when it comes to what i'm sharing with you guys it's good to know what you guys like to see leah jet and i know i can't please everybody i try my best but i know some of you guys will want to see it some of you guys won't but at least i can kind of get a majority feel of things Leah just says, Lucas, best info for breeding rummy nose tetra. The best info, I would say that you want to keep them warm. Best to separate the male and females. And have a special kind of system for them. Whether it be, um, you can use that quilt. What do they call it? The quilt mesh. You're going to get like a sheet of mesh that they use for quilting at like the Hobby Lobby stores. And you can put it over some rocks or just make a false bottom of it. And you can put in a small piece of plant. But keep the males and females split up in a different tank. And condition them with like Daphnia. If you can get some Daphnia, that really helps. Any kind of live food definitely helps. Your females are going to be fatter. Your males are going to be skinnier. And uh, keep them apart for a couple of days. And pop them into the new area that has pretty much the same water um, they should start breeding for you and then you can just musical fish them out of there after I would say two three days because they really should be breeding that first day or second day and then it only takes I think a day for the eggs to hatch but the hardest part is raising up the fry and they're gonna want more soft acidic water warmer water too and i'm talking about like 78 80 degrees maybe even more warmer the better but if you can learn how to make some infusoria that would probably be your best bet to get the uh, baby fry working um keeping it simple actually had a awesome awesome system that he created i don't know if you guys know who that is a kid from Australia, he actually just opened a new shop. But he has taken the dosing pumps for fertilizers and was pumping infusoria through it to his fry containers, which was absolutely brilliant. So they would constantly get some kind of food source every so often. Uh, so that was cool, but hope those help you out, Leah. Uh, 
and botanicals too. Catapa leaves, if you could add a catapa leaf into their system, into their breeding system, just for the eggs to put the antibacterial, antifungal in there. Because it, uh, extra help, especially for the babies when they're young and vulnerable with their immunities. Dana Duckweed's Elbows says, what's up, bro? Was going to text you, but did you know about the Tampa annual auction tomorrow? So, I do, and I've just been torn about it all week. I really, as much as I would love to go, my QT needs some space anyways, and I don't really have space to put new things. Plus, I can't really afford to be buying fish right now, unfortunately. I so wish I could go, though. But if you guys are near Tampa, go check out the Tampa Annual Auction. If Dane, if you got any more information on that so people can see the link, that would be great. Because I don't know where to find that on the internet. Probably Tampa Aquarium Society would have the information. I'm sure they got a .com or .org. Just Google search it. TM classes, what is the trick to not overfeed but ensure your bristle nose placos get enough to eat? Driftwood. Just like I was showing earlier there with the caradina shrimp, that soft driftwood. And also catapa leaves, leaf litter, oak leaves, maple leaves. Um, those are great natural ways to make sure they always got something going into their gut biome. Plus, it's really natural and healthy for their gut biome. And great for their immunity. So, um, that would be my best recommendation for not overfeeding. The thing with that, too, is it doesn't rot like food does. And Melissa Foster, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Super, super appreciated. Says, hi, guys. Keep on keeping on. Well, thank you, thank you. The words of encouragement, we could always use them. That's for sure. Keeps me motivated to hear that. So thank you, Melissa. I was thinking about doing a tankathon uh, live stream. And I don't know if I thought I talked about it here before, but man, they got that Petco good deal going on right now. I need some tank money. So I don't know. I was thinking about doing some long, crazy live stream here in the bar and we could do like tours and stuff just try to raise money up for fish tanks i don't know is that selfish to want more fish tanks i could probably do better but that sell is on <laughs> you know i like fish tanks what can i say i'm an aquarium hoarder all right but melissa thank you thank you thank you all right um do 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 scrolling for those questions and I am not seeing, even if they're the only ones in the tanks, it's good to do rock piles. Still, I got moss and plants, says Leo. Yeah, so even with the caradinas, the rock piles, even if you don't have driftwood, rock piles are just as good for the uh, caradinas. Because it does still allow that nursery in somewhere that doesn't get disturbed for them. Mm. Lady Diane says, to help Lucas see your questions, says, use the big old question marks. Appreciate you, Lady Diane. Always great to see you in here. Thank you for doing your thing as an awesome mod. Well, Matt, thank you so much for ordering the Praycox Rainbows. Really appreciate that. Oh, yeah, I got to mention the website, too, so... Might as well mention that real quick. We do got quite a few things up on there. Killifish. Added these mystery snails in there. We've got a ton of mystery snails. Just the gold mystery snails. A uh, member from the club, a fan, uh, hooked me up with them, gave me a bunch of them. And they didn't know what to do with them. I was like, well, I can put them on the website. So I got them on there for cheap, like half off of anything other, any other websites selling them for. And then we got the Praycocks few other things and also put like an in stock section and then a special buy section so the things that are special buys uh like the ones on sale and whatnot are in their own category and then everything that's in stock is in 
its own category. That way you guys don't have to go looking through categories to try to figure out what's in stock, what's not in stock. It should be easier for you all to navigate. But holy moly, look at all those super chats. You guys are absolutely awesome. Carol Cox, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the huge $20 super chat. Tank fun, sorry it's not a whole tank. No, that's just about a tank. Actually, a 20 long, 20 longs, 20 highs are what I'm after. So 20 bucks is pretty dang close. So thank you, thank you so much, Carol. And Von Hoff, thank you so much for the $5 Super Chat, Von. Appreciate you, brother. Says, thanks for all you do. I'm so impressed with the progress you are making. Well, thanks, brother. It's been a lot of work. And it's great to see it all come together. There's still so much to do. I'm excited to share it all with you guys. Excited to catch you guys up on videos, too. I still plan on making a keep coming out with a bunch of videos trying to catch you guys up. Um, now that I'm not having to build so many racks right now and I can kind of fit in some space, it's uh, been nice to be able to take the time and do that for you guys. So thank you, Vaughn. I really appreciate you. And also 3G with the $5 Super Chat. Thank you so much, 3G, for the tank fund. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that and I uh, hope you're doing well. You guys are awesome. Really, really do appreciate you. And Xanadu, how did I almost miss that? I definitely didn't. I saw it was up there. Because how could I miss that iconic thumbnail profile picture? Xanadu do with the $10 super chat. Thank you so much. It says, yes, on the Fish Room Mega Stream Tour thing, please. And thanks as always. Well, I think we might just have to do that. So thank you, Xanadu. All right. You guys are awesome. That is definitely going to help. Brent Harp says, How early do Neos start showing color after being born? Trying to figure out timing to cull my colony. Well, that is the trickiest thing. Um, not always the easiest to uh, figure out. Because sometimes you could call the clearest looking one when it's a juvenile or baby. And then it ended up being the brightest and most colorfulest one. It's really hard to tell until they really start breaking out male and females. Females will always have a whole lot more color. And then males, they just won't. It's so hard to get males to be solid. And um, you can get some to be, but to get majority, it's just work and work and work and work and work. And um, you can't really tell the difference between them until they really get to sub-adult for as far as what they truly will be colored out for. And even by then, I believe they'll be about braiding. So about the time they could braid, about the time, you'd have to try to figure that out. Yeah, I fixed my gimbal there. It's being all weird. Thomas G, my dude, you have been absolutely awesome. Uh, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. And also the super chats on my videos, dude. That has been great. Uh, glad you won that bet. Very smart bet. Good thinking, man. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I couldn't help myself. I had to get tanks in there. I knew I said I wasn't going to do it. But Jacob Olvritz, or my boy, Jacob, thank you, bro, for the uh, awesome tip in the PayPal. Really appreciate that, Jay. Um, wow, you guys are awesome. Oh, let's see. That is definitely going to help. I might be able to make it to Petco after all. I think I'll still have to do the, uh, tank stream, though. Because if we're going to go, we might as well fill up the van. Because it's like an hour and a half away. All right, let's get back to your guys' questions. Are you guys asking questions? I got to show the appreciation where it's at. Echo Delta, thank you so much for your $4 and $10 super, $4 and 10 cents super chat. With the 410, good buddy. Aquarium Hoarder Fun, thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. All right. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm trying to speed read for questions. Anson FX says, hey, LRB, me and my fiance are 
looking to start breeding our own little human. Any tips, cold water change? Uh, really? I mean, you gotta wait till like the moon's full. And I, I'll just tell you this, when it happens, you'll know it happens. Uh, most people I've talked to, they know when it happens. Uh, Brave Hearts, but good luck to you. Brave Hearts 1986 says, Hey, LRB, any tips on how to sell plants to LFS? Thanks. Best thing to do is go in and talk to the owner, and you could either just talk to him face-to-face, -face, maybe show some pictures, but it's always good if you could come in with some product and be like, all right, this is what I got. I'm farming this out or I'm planning on trying to make this a business be on board because more than likely if they already got a plant section they've got a plant guy or they get it from a wholesaler and usually you can kind of read from their plants where they get them from too um, so keep that in mind you can read from the LFS the local fish store on what they have displayed is kind of what you're up against to what the owner will rebuttal you. So if there's no display, oh, you might be in, you could be sitting on a gold mine. He's going to want some plants, especially if you can tell him how easy it is to uh, put in his systems. So if he doesn't have plants, he may not feel like he can keep them. So definitely check out his systems, comfort him on those. Um, just a few things to think about, but if they do got displays, kind of look at their display and be like they're all tagged and special colored um tags where they've got the nice pictures and everything on them uh, more than likely getting it from a wholesale farmer now if he's just got random stems and other stuff floating around there may be another guy in your area that's been doing the same thing and then that becomes a bidding war and that could be little more difficult because then you're both cutting each other's um, fundage so hope that helps you out all right I have back scrolls so if you guys had a question I could uh, catch up with them because I try to keep up on them all uh, Dane at duckweeds elbows says tried adding the link but maybe not be able since I'm not a mod. Maybe Lady LRB can. Here, I'll go ahead and mod you, bro. I could give you a mod. There you go. You're the mod man now. Chris Resecker. Thank you so much for being a member. Says, aquatics are... Do you have any favorite type of platies? Um, I really like my gold dust mollies platies whichever you would like to call them they're probably my favorite out of them all and then the really yellow ones the super yellow ones i've been waiting for the right school of yellow ones to come about they had these ones at the triple crown but i could not afford them in the auction i think they went for some crazy money like 80 bucks it was for like a family of these super yellow platies but i couldn't afford it but I'm hoping that day will come up again. The Gold Dust Molly is probably mine. Usually I can't pick a favorite, but with those, since it's just kind of more of a color option, it's a little easier. Gregory, Gregory Noel says, what kind of shrimp would you recommend for a N29 gallon? Platy tank with a clown Pleco, 10 coolie loaches, 4 autos. Um, I don't know if I would do any kind of shrimp, to be honest. I mean, even though the, the coolie loaches will have small mouths, you could probably do like a big vampire shrimp or something like that. Or a uh, fan shrimp, one of those bamboo fan shrimps or something. But coolie loaches, they love to eat snails and sh the smaller shrimp. Uh, clown plecos. If I can remember right, they're kind of meat eaters too, I think. More carnivorous than most Plecos. If I'm wrong on that, please tell us in the chat. 
Okay, also, are you in live chat, mate? I am in live chat. It's just hard to scroll through this and see everything and stay up with the super chats. But we're all caught up. I'm scrolling down in order, picking up those question marks. Squinting a little bit, trying to speed read and rambling. All right, James Hand says, how tall does Dwarf Sad get? Uh, can Amazon swords do fine in plain sand? Amazon swords can do fine in plain sand. Dwarf Sag does really good in plain sand, too. Um, as far as how high it can get, it can get, I would say, probably like 10 to 12 inches normally. But it takes years. It takes years. Like, it'll stay small for a long, long time. It could be years. And then after a while, it'll just get taller. But it only usually gets about, like, 10 or 12 inches. Not like uh, the regular Sag that can grow up much taller. No eggs. Says best floating plants for a tub. Um... Well, kind of depends on your water and your setup and where you're keeping it. Full sun, shade. Um, that could all play in factor. So to pick the best, it would really have to see your space. And then some states don't allow like water lettuce. But water lettuce is good for full sun if you don't have much sun or shade then you can get away with a lot of things you can float most aquarium floating plants and if you want a cool video for unusual floating plants plants that you wouldn't usually think of being floating plants but work awesome as floating plants and create marshes you can lrb search on youtube lrb floating plants and there's a great video for that You can show you how you can flow Rotalias, Luigias, Hagrophilias, Copas, all kinds of different stuff. Chris Trapp, thank you so much, brother, for the $5 super chat for the fish uh, fun. Really appreciate you, Chris. Appreciate all you guys, even the ones that don't super chat. Appreciate. All 139 of you in here. GOP says, I got a 10-gallon tank. Uh, can I keep a pregnant guppy with a ghost shrimp that has eggs together in the same tank? A lot of decor, a lot of plants and snails. So with that ghost shrimp, I would not keep it with your pregnant guppy. Because those ghost shrimp actually have razor-sharp claws that can kill those fry. And also could damage up your guppy and or your guppy female may get hangry and try to battle it. And who knows what could happen through all that involvement. And thank you, Dane, for linking up that um, site link for the Tampa Bay Aquarium Society auction. Dustin Aquatic Made Easy says, how's the new house going? How's the fish doing? Fish are all doing great. Everything's been awesome. So many babies. I've got to try to get to this fry rack system that I really want to build to be able to put all these fry, which if I'm going to do it, I want to do it right and do it right. I'm thinking like 16 foot pond sump. I think that would be cool. Then with the house stuff, getting a lot of little things done, been working on the garden, been enjoying getting out in the garden, just, I'm blessed. It's hard to complain. I really don't have room to complain, I should say. Like, I ain't got a mansion, I ain't got a Lamborghini, but I sure in the heck don't even need either one of those, because I'm loving what I got right now, so hard to complain. Definitely feel blessed. 
Just need more tanks from Petco. <laughs> Riverfront Aquatics Extra says, Will you ever sell microworm cultures on your website, or would you happen to know of a good source where I could find them? Hmm. Clubs are good for them, but as far as online, there's got to be some people who do the microcultures. Um, they can be hard to ship because they can get turned upside down and there's a lot to mess with with microworm cultures and I used to do that but now I don't know I just don't I only have so much time to do certain things so unfortunately that is not in my time uh, Nogs is that how you say it or no EGS or Nogs did you guys get any action from Ian? Um, we did not. We got a lot of dry air, a lot of wind. Matter of fact, we haven't had rain for like a month. It's been like a desert here. It's been crazy. Crazy dry. Uh, we did get a lot of wind. I think we got like a few dead trees did get blown down, but nothing crazy. It's those little gusts that would get you. But the weather, man, I cannot complain considering where I used to live. They've already been tickling the 30s, and oh my God, I'm not ready for that. And I don't even want to be ready for that. But I am at the bottom of the chat, so if you do got a question, now's your time to shine because I can read it fast. If not, you're going to hear me ramble on about this and that. Chris Resecker says, Do you plan on doing a visit in the near future of the old house in Indiana? I would love to. I would absolutely love to. But that's all up to Nathan and the guy who bought it. So it's totally up to him. I did hear from him. So all those people who were wondering about him. He did finally message me back, said he appreciated me checking up on him and stuff, and that he is doing good, but he didn't really say much more, and uh, not really going to press him, because I'm sure he's just kind of getting to know and how to mess with all those tanks, so I don't know. I'm not going to press him. One day, I'll, I'll test the waters with that, and we'll find out, but I think it would be cool, too. I would love to see it again. I won't lie, I kind of miss like my backyard, especially after building all those custom stone walls and everything else, which I still got the footage that I could come out with those for that. I would like to like the lost footages of LRB Aquatics 1.0. Maybe you put those together one day, but I mean, it's hard to miss it where I'm at now. Like, I cannot. It's hard to miss it. I love Florida. Okay. Um, Wooden Cash says, tips on keep cherry shrimp. First time. Best thing to do, Wooden Cash, is to make sure you got some hardness in your water. And... You want, I mean, the best thing to do would be to YouTube search LRB keeping neocaridinas or LRB neocaridinas. A whole video will come out and it'll tell you all the things you need to know. But one thing you definitely need to know is that they're not as finicky as most people think they can be. They do like temperatures more towards. 72 76 in there that's like optimal temperature if you get too hot it can be harder to get them to breed and some may die get them up under 68 then same scenario so just keep them up in the 70s there around in there you'll be good and more established your aquarium is the better but the number one thing to know is your water hardness and i recommend a tds meter so you can use it to test your water and see how hard it is. So with the TDS meter, it'll give you a number. And anything under 200 is considered soft water. Anything above 200 is considered hard water. And you want it 
above 200 for optimal breeding. Um, you can have it a little lower, but not much lower because that softness, that acidity can get to their molding um, and cause problems. But uh, besides that, yeah, best thing to know is your water and your hardness. And also, uh, more mature tanks even better. So don't just jump into it. Go ahead and set the tank first. Make sure you're seasoning it up a bit. And then also rock piles. You want to give them somewhere comfortable to feel safe. You may not see them for the first week or so when you put them in there, but after they get comfortable in their new tank and know that there's not predators in that tank, then you'll start seeing them more often. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, Michigan Tropicals, member for 13 months. 13 months going strong. Miss you guys. Happy fish keeping, everyone. Yeah, I wish we could have made it to Aqua Show. We so wanted to. And uh, it would have been nice to hang out with you guys up there again. But uh, thank you so much for being a member for such a long time. Really appreciate you, Michigan Tropicals. Alan Tooth 48, club member. Whoop, whoop. Says, hey, Lucas, it was great seeing you at the meeting last Saturday. Wish I had more time to talk with you. Same to you. I was kind of like grabbed my fish, hurried up, picked my pickings. And I was out of there. I can't remember what I was hurrying up for. It's something I had to do here at home, but I knew I was on, that, on the go. Um, Brian Goer. Are you planning on going on the Seagrass? I guess our next club meeting is at Seagrass, which should be fun. I haven't seen that place in person. I've seen videos, but I haven't seen it in person. Uh, Brian Goer, what's the biggest sword tail you have ever seen? Uh, probably the Montezuma sword tails. They get huge. They get huge. The big cell fin or Montezuma sword fins. Chia Pad, what's up, Chia Pad? Says keep it multicolored shrimp. And was told that mixing colors make them eventually return to clear color. So, no, that's not true. It's complete false. Matter of fact, when I changed the whole perspective on mixing shrimp, um, when we were all first getting shrimp in, it was always said that, oh, they'll all turn brown, they'll all get a brown color, they'll all look like crap. Well, it wasn't true. Like, they will get towards a sometimes breed out wild types. And the wild types will have, like, striping to them. And even then, the wild types can still have different colors to them. And those are still only a very small percent of what else can come out of mixing colors. I actually come out with the Skittles or the Skrittles and start offering those to everybody and then... I was making all kinds of different crazy colors of shrimp back in the day from doing it, which was just the proof in the pudding. So it kind of changed that rhetoric that mixing them does that. So it's crazy to hear the rhetoric come back that they'll return clear color. And I don't know who like comes up with this stuff, especially now considering I think we've evolved as far as the hobbyist. Uh, most of them that do know and do repeat down the echo chambers of the whole mockingbird situation of answering questions that them all turning clear or turning brown has been proven wrong. So to hear from it to be brown to clear because they never said clear back in the day makes you wonder if it's cycling back to uh, that type of answering that you're getting. I don't know if you're getting your answers from Facebook or what. But that sounds like a something you would get from Facebook. Sorry, but it's the truth. But Chia Pad, my boy, oh my God. I got that in the mail today. Hilarious. And uh, one day you may see me wearing that. <laughs> uh, he knows what I'm talking about. Um, scroll, scroll, scroll. Chia Pet says, what do you think the flooding did to a natural fish population like the pygmy sun 
fish and etc so down there it definitely made everything into a melting pot around here it didn't do anything so there's plenty of parts of the state where they'll be so there's no worries on any of their populations plus with those pygmy sunfish they can batten down pretty well get into a log or get into leaves even though you can have some current underneath and on the edges or even in nooks and crannies, there are places that fish learn and find to hide. And they end up going somewhere. I did finally get some uh, native fish though at the last club meeting last week. I will be showing those, I believe, in the next video, which I will have for you on Sunday. Uh, which are, I, I've never even heard of them. I was like, Legendary Bill Shields had them. He was like some crazy named fish. Those are my favorite kinds, especially when they got some color on them and they look good. Well, yeah, can't wait to show you guys those in the next video. Just Mo 5 says, what's your favorite underwater flowering plant? The buches are cool when they flower underwater. Really, they're about the only underwater flowering plant. What are they? Oh, besides crypts. Crypts can flower underwater. I don't think I can think of any other ones that flower underwater. Can you guys think of any other plants that flower underwater? The only ones, uh, maybe an Amazon sword. They flower a little bit underwater. Not very often. I think they got to poke through to get to a flower. And you guys got any other experience with uh, plants flowering underwater? Anubiuses will. Actually, Anubiuses probably got the coolest looking flower out of them all. Because it's got like that little corn cob thing in the middle. And it's pistol. Nugs, nugs, nugs. Says we don't have a fish club here in Columbia, South Carolina. Well, that's a pretty decent sized city, ain't it? How would one go about starting one? Well, I like your thinking. You're already thinking. Um, so as far as going about starting one, maybe talk to another fish club. There's all kinds of fish clubs out there. Uh, reach out to them. And some of them will help you give, help give you like their same structure. And you can kind of copy off the structures of these other fish clubs to help create the structure of your fish club. And then beyond that, it's just advertising and getting word of mouth out. And what helps draw people to fish clubs is auctions, swaps, BAP programs, HAP programs, which a BAP program is a breeding award program. And these breeding award programs are actually great for the clubs and the people. So what you do is you get and breed some fish and then you give like six to the club or however many, some people do six, some people do 10, and then they will take those and put them in an auction. And then the club will get the money for those, but then you'll get points. So it will help pay the club to keep moving and do greater things in the future as far as like bringing in speakers or going on field trips and things like that. So those are great ways to bring revenue to the club and a place for people to be competitive and try to get awards and do stuff and just have fun with being in a club. And then the HAP is pretty much the same thing, which is a horticulture uh ward program which is just growing plants and then you get points for that kind of stuff and then you could also work with local fish stores um, sometimes local fish stores will help sponsor especially if you're good at pitching ideas and um, get the local fish store to realize how great of an opportunity it would be to have a fish club in the city that they sponsor because that can draw their target audience. You're looking at that local fish store's main target audience. So if you can work some relationship 
to where maybe they give like a free deal or maybe they give a discount to club members. That can also um, be a good thing for a club and to get it off the ground, especially when you're first looking out for fundage. So I hope those help you. B. Wood says, how often for water changes in 29 gallon shrimp tank? You know, hashtag, you put that hashtag at LRB. They got that new handles thing for YouTube. I don't know if I should just have it at LRB or LRB Aquatics or, I don't know. Sorry, you got me thinking on that. How often for water changes in a 29 gallon shrimp tank? So I would just do 25% water changes, no more than that weekly or bi-weekly really depends on your schedule and say hey you don't even have the time to do that you could do 25 percent once a month and be all right with that they really don't need much water change and they don't like their water change to change too much um really for the shrimp tanks and stuff changing the water would be more for the plants uh, same with my fish really changing the water is more for my fish tanks as well or is more for the plants in my fish tanks. But if you can stay on a 25% weekly, it really helps with algae as well. That's why I recommend 25% a week. Just because that consistency just helps with, it must be the cycle of algae and how it forms and why it helps with it because it doesn't allow it to build up in communicate in the colony to the point that it figures out where to stick itself and do all kinds of other stuff and grow like crazy lady diane thank you thank you thank you so much for the teller super chat appreciate you my super mod lady diane you're the bee's knees um, have you ever kept sulwazy shrimp asked jessmo 05 i did when they first came out I was having to keep all the first shrimp when they were first coming out, and uh, I enjoyed them, and I do want to get some again. I did get them to breed, but just barely a little, and uh, there was no information on how to keep them, so I didn't know if it was soft or hard. I bounced back and forth between the two a couple times. I did get them to breed, but at that point, I didn't know how the heck they were. But now there's a lot of great information on how to keep them uh, a lot nicer and that is to uh, keep them warmer but you want hard water but you want to keep them in the 80s Jay Coob no more PayPal for super chat question mark oh Jay Coob no I got your um, notification I did say thank you earlier but dude glad to see you in here I did send you an email the other day. I don't know if you got it, but dude, do you ever need anything? Just feel free to hit me up because your help has been absolutely awesome and much, much, much appreciated. He's been a huge, huge supporter. Scrolly, scroll, scroll. Can't Anubius flower. Yes, Anubius fuchsias flowers. Peace lilies. Yeah, peace lilies is kind of unique plant for flowering. And I have seen peace lilies kept underwater for quite a some time. It's kind of like a. Kind of grows like a Anubius. It's weird. Chia Pet says, do you know why pet stores have not had much fancy goldfish and koi in stock for a couple of months? Well, I have no idea. Could be the season, possibly. I don't know. I actually know you would think that they would have. No, they are on the other side of the hemisphere, so they would be in the more of the spring. And they are just getting into breeding season. So it's kind of the end of their cycle as far as 
on the other side of the hemisphere for those who breed a lot of those. I was just watching Dexter's World. I don't know if any of you guys seen Dexter's World, but he just came out with a ton of uh, goldfish and koi. So I know they're breeding them out over there now. I'm getting the numbers back up. But I don't know. I don't follow any of the wholesale list or anything that's really going on in that kind of market. Just kind of what's in mainstream fish. That's about it. It's been a while since I've even been in a fish store. That was just to go to Petco to get tanks. And usually I just go to tanks, get tanks and don't even look at the fish. Sometimes I do, but it's usually always the same. Same old, same old. Wooden Cash says, are you keeping any keeping any tiger baitus? So I'm not the uh, baddest baddest. A lot of people want to braid those, but what people don't realize is they'll try to go for the most colorful ones. But it's the females that are really drab and dull in color. So if you want to braid them, you got to get the real drab and dull looking ones but it can be tricky because the beta males can sometimes be draw up drab and dull looking too because they are a hierarchy kind of fish like discus where they'll have pecking orders and the alphas will be more colorful pontagetans yes yeah, some of pontagetans do flower Oh, I know what Jay's talking about now. Okay, I got you. I got you, Jay. Appreciate you. Yeah, Dexter's world is cool. Stroll, stroll, stroll. And sorry if I'm missing anybody's questions. I feel like I got them all. Hey, dude says, or well, Matt says, hey, dude, got some goody heads today. And one of the males looks like he got tore up in shipping. They're in good water now. What's your go-to for fin rot damage? So if you want to go with the meds meds, API fungus cure is really good or Ruby Reef Rally is a good option and or uh, Catapa leaves. Whereas that way you've got that anti-fungal and antibacterial in with them. And that'll help them. And just make sure that it's not getting picked on. More than likely, he's probably being kept away from the crowd. Especially with those goodyids. This might help to comfort him in his own space if he is getting bullied. So keep an eye out on that and just watch the tank's behavior. Hope that helps you. Chia Pez says, oh, have you ever raised checkered Tetris? I haven't raised checkered Tetras before. There's a lot of Tetras that I would love to breed on. But I need the proper systems to do so. And I'm, I'm close. I'm closer than I have ever been in my life. I'll tell you that much. Because this water here, I think, is pretty good for them. And uh, the water I used to have up north was not so much. And once I get outside, get a space outside, especially this next summer, and get a greenhouse going out there, that way I can have a warmer space. Because when breeding tetras, you want it warm. You want it 80 plus. And I don't want my fish room to be 80 plus. Because one, I've got to sit in here. And two, the shrimp do not like it at all. Antonio Ortega says, have you seen the green really line yet? Matter of fact, I did. I was randomly scrolling on Instagram the other day. Hardly ever get on Instagram, but I was ran randomly scrolling on there. And um, there was a green really right in my face. I was like, well, that's cool. I'm pretty sure I subscribed to the guy. I can't remember who it was, but I'm like, dude, I got to subscribe. You're doing my kind of thing. I like it. Um, Chris Resecker says, have you kept Leertail Panchecks killifish? Man, they are gorgeous. The Leertail. 
A leer tail pain check skillyfish. No, I don't know if I can picture that. I feel like I wish I had Google near me. I should have brought my computer. Next time I'll bring my computer in here so I can Google stuff like that. And then I could show you guys a picture of what he's talking about. We can learn together. But no, sounds interesting. Congo Tetra, hands down. Matter of fact, I got some reading Congo Tetras in a 20 gallon right now. I was about to throw them into the pond. I have bred the Congo Tetra though. I bred a few of them on accident by giving somebody some plants and then they got some baby Congo Tetras and then gave them to me. But uh, maybe I can accidentally do that again. Let's see. Wiggy, w w w that's a wild name. Wiggy, Wigag the second or two says my new favorite fish is Galaxy Resbora, but I moved and cannot find them now. Where's a good place online to buy them? I don't know. I just Google search Galaxy Resboras. Let's see what you can find up. Um. I don't know, Dan's fish, maybe he might have some. I don't know if he has some. Let's see, Riverfront Aquatics Extra says, have you ever kept paradise fish? I have not, but they're really beautiful. You don't come, yeah, well, once in a while you'll see them in a store, but I don't know. I'm not always on the lookout for them either. Oh, Antonio, you got those green rillies at the Aquashella. That's pretty nice. Good for you. That is sweet. Wooden Cash says, what are your tips on keeping a black worm culture? So, if you're keeping a black worm culture, definitely sand will be your friend. Keep them like a regular aquarium. Treat them like a fish. Treat them like a shrimp. Keep them in their own little culture. You can feed them. I feed. I used to feed mine tetracolor tropical granules. You can feed them algae wafers. You can feed them those shrimp pellets. They like pellet kind of foods. You can probably even feed them some table scraps. But yeah, just treat them like regular, like a fish. Just keep in mind, it takes them a long time. From what I read, it takes them like 50 weeks or so to start reproducing. Now, if you do cut them up, they can grow off segmentation. I don't know how all that works. I don't. I think they gotta be cut a certain way or something. I don't know how that all works. Um, but you can just keep them like sand and stuff. Now the trick is to harvest them and especially to have enough to harvest. And if you really wanted to have enough to harvest, you've got to make like a braiding rack tray of multiple trays of black worms that have some kind of sump system that runs through them. And you can keep them in shallower tanks, that helps. It's just, it's hard to grow enough to harvest without doing like big ponds or something and having tons of space for them. And let's see, any other tips on the black worm culture? I don't think so. I mean, normal temperatures, this fish. Um, Dylan Renecki says, have any tips for Daphnia? I just started culture in a five gallon aquarium. So, five-gallon aquarium, they'll definitely eat that water volume pretty quick as far as any food sources in there. So, it's not going to explode. Like, you may have one tiny explosion, but it may not get very big in a five-gallon aquarium. They, I would learn how to try to make green water, which you can do with grass or just broken down organics in a lot of light. And softer water is better for growing the green water. So you just break that down, and as it breaks down, all that chlorophyll, the algae will eat off of the broken down 
organics and just keep that light shining just directly on it and it should get nice and crane for you in the meantime you can do spirulina but careful a little bit of spirulina is all it takes you do too much you can't make a green soup or green drink out of the spirulina for your Daphne. It will kill them. Um, even though you'd think, with since they like green water, that they would like green spirulina water. It doesn't work the same way. So a little bit of spirulina will help. Time flies, says Lady Diane. Oh, it sure does. Thanks for letting me know. I am at the bottom of the chat, too. I kept up with y'all. Can't believe it. After all these years, still keeping up with y'all. Big Shrimpin says, I have a cart full of fish on the Wet Spot website. Do I hit cement? LOL. Do it. You already know you're going to hit cement. You'll figure it out later, right? Who needs food? You need fish. But, uh, yeah. Enjoy that. That's always fun. All right, looks like I am, or, well, we are over the hour mark. And um, this is where we say our goodbyes. Kind of sad. Because I was just getting into it, like as always, though. I love hanging out with you guys on my Friday nights. But I should have more videos coming out with you guys. Like I mentioned, I'm trying to catch you guys up. And it's so nice to have time to do so where I don't feel so stressed about it. So thank you. Thank you all of you guys for being so patient for the whole rebuild and going through the time that it takes to settle down and still being here for me and helping out. You guys have been absolutely awesome. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. And sorry you guys at the end with the questions. But I've already pulled the band-aid. Till next time, everybody, peace. Have a great one. Plus, you could always ask in the comments. I'll get to the comments eventually. I may not get there right away. But I'll be there eventually. <laughs>